you love. Glory to God. Good morning. Glory to God. Greater you love. Greater you. Nasheed Musumola. You guys beat Clean the Drunk today for the first position. Great are you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's the first day of the 11th month. It's the first day of the 11th month. You're kept and protected by God. You are kept and protected by God. The first day of the 11th month, you are kept and protected by God. You are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. In the name of Jesus, you are kept and protected by God. You are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to this new month. You are kept, protected by God. And you are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men in the name of Jesus. You are kept and protected by God. And then you are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men in the name of Jesus. I was praying your background would have changed because you'll be back. <laughs> God, that made me laugh. So I was praying your background would have changed because it should have been back. Listen to me. Happy New Month, guys. There's a position I usually stay that I like. I'm looking for it. Sorry, I'm looking for it. That's usually my best position. Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Happy New Month. You are kept protected by God. You're delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Um, this month, you know, God wants me to tell you, I'm going to pamper you. Yeah, get ready to be spoiled by God. God's really going to spoil you this month in the name of Jesus. 11th month, God is really, really going to spoil you. Uh, good morning, sir. Most you put glad you are doing the great work you are called to do. Um, this month, you are kept and protected by God and delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. In Jesus' name. Somebody was saying that by now my background should have changed. <laughs> you know, see this background, you don't like the team. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, yes, just make me laugh all the time. Please, amen. I, I, I feel very glad, excited. The last, this last London meeting, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, it's the best I've had so far in London. It was beautiful. So glad. But welcome to this new month. Get ready. God is about to pamper you this month. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even playing. God is about to pamper. God is about to spoil you in the name of Jesus. Between now and the end of the year, God says, I want to spoil you. I decree you are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men in the name of Jesus. You're delivered from wicked and unreasonable men in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you that you are supernaturally kept by God. You're supernaturally kept by God in the name of Jesus. You are supernaturally kept by God in the name of Jesus. You are supernaturally kept by God in the name of You're delivered from wicked and unreasonable men and you are supernaturally kept by God in in the name of Jesus, you are supernaturally kept by God. You are protected by God. You are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. And you are supernaturally kept by God's grace. In the name of Jesus. This month, you are supernaturally kept by God. You are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. And you will see God pamper you in ways that will shock you. In the name of Jesus, God is about to pamper you. In the name of Jesus, God is about to... Just nourish you. Just take care of you. God is about to take care of you in ways that it will shock you. In ways that will shock you. God is saying, let me take care of you. This November and December, get ready for celebration. God will exceed your expectation. God wants to take care of you. 
God wants to take care of you. I decree God wants to take care of you this season in the name of Jesus. In the name of you deliver from wicked and unreasonable men. And God is about to pamper you, spoil you, take care of you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. We're going to make our declarations and then we go to the one I pinned down yesterday. is not the full declaration, so I don't like that one. And the other one is like miles down the phone. I wish somebody could pin could it up. Not just me all the time. It would be nice, but give me a minute. We just want to make our declaration and then we go from there. Glory to God. Let's see this. Let me see if this is the right one. Yeah, that's it. This is the right one. This is the right one. This is the right one. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Don't live and don't walk in fear. I'm warning somebody. Fear will activate the plan of the enemy over your life. Don't live nor walk in fear. Walk by faith. God has gone ahead of you. And God is about to pamper you. One, two, you are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. You are protected by God. And God is about to spoil you because he crowns the year with his goodness. He crowns the year with his goodness. God is about to pamper you. God is about to spoil you. God crowns the year with his goodness in the name of Jesus. You enjoy the goodness of God. You enjoy the goodness of God. I decree this month you will not fail. This month you will not fail. This month you will not fail. This month you are kept by God. This month you will not fail. This month you are kept by God. That grace is spoiling you. Grace is taking care of you. That would be your testimony. Grace is taking care of me. That should be your testimony. Grace is taking care of me. In the name of Jesus, you are protected by God. You are kept by God. Grace is taking. I was speaking to Yin Kong, one of our members who just relocated to the UK. I saw her in church on Sunday and she was just sharing testimonies of how, look at her house here, look at the children's school here, that, you know, I don't have to stress. Grace will take care of you this month. You are about to come into the pampering. God is about to pamper you. God will pamper you this month. Grace will take care of you. You are protected. You are kept from wicked and unreasonable men. In the name of Jesus. Your testimony will be my case is different. Grace is taking care of me. Grace is taking care of me. My case is different. Grace is taking care of me. In the name of Jesus. My case is different. Grace is taking care of me. Well, yeah, the Naira is obviously hitting a dollar, um, hitting a thousand. Uh, the dollar is hitting a thousand, but guess what? Grace is taking care of me. I will never be stranded. Grace is taking care of me. Amen. Let's make our declarations and we go to Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 18. 1, 2, 3, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I'm passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Let's do that one more time. Let's do that one more time. Glory to God. Let's do that one more time. My case is different. Grace is working for me. That should be your declaration. That should be your declaration. Between now and the end of the month, my case is different. Grace is working for me. One more time. Can we say, my case is different. Grace is working for me. That should be your declaration, your confession, your affirmation. Between now and the end of the year, my case is different. Grace is working for me.
Say it again one more time. My case is different. Grace is working for me. Let's do, let's read again. Let's make our declaration again from top to bottom. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Amen. 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 November, December, your case is different. Grace is working for you. Please store on your calendar. 26th of November is our six hours prayers this month. Six hours prayers this month. Then get ready in December. We're going to do our 10 days fast in December. So in November, the six hours prayers on the, on the 26th of this month. And in December, we're going to do a 10, 10 days fast stretch. These meetings are going to be powerful. These meetings are, are going to be powerful. If you're on the mainland, the Sunday morning on the mainland, this Sunday, Sunday morning on the mainland, you want to be there. This Sunday, you don't want to miss Sunday morning on the mainland. Uh, 26th of November is the last Saturday of this month. It's the six-hour stretch prayers. It is important. In December, we're doing a 10 days fast. In December, it is going to bless you. It is going to. So save this date. It is going to bless you. Amen. Let's read out of God's word. Let's read out of God's word this morning. Let's read out of God's word this morning. Let's read out of God's word. Don't, Sunday morning, mainland church, get ready. Um, Lekki church, two services this Sunday. Um, uh, mainland, don't miss midweek service. Don't miss Thursday. God is up to something. It will change your life completely. Um, what other announcement? The 26th. Um, Father, sorry. Can't wait. I remember how God delivered me from what could have been a fatal accident during the fast. People remember, I think I remember there are too many testimonies. So we're going to do a fast in December. Um, uh, we're going to do a fast in December. Um, um, and I teach fasting from the place of the finished work. I know a lot of people do fast in January. I believe the year has already started in January. I don't want to be reacting. So we prepare towards January from December. We set the set the clock going in december amen so 26th of, of of november invite your friends invite your family members the logic church we have six hours of prayers on the 26th of november very important very important so today we're reading second corinthians you know how we do every morning we take a chapter and then we teach lines upon lines precept upon precept every, you know word for word second corinthians chapter six um, from verse 1 to 18. Prepare the whole one. Second Corinthians 6, 1 to 18. Um, find your Bibles. Hope your Bible is not on the phone that you're using to watch me. You want to make sure you have the Bible and you're reading together. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Fantastic. So we, let's do it. We then as workers together with him also plead who understands what verse 1 is saying. What we read yesterday is that we have not every believer is called into the fivefold ministry. What are the fivefold ministry? I'm glad you asked. The, the office of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Not every believer is called into the fivefold ministry. However, every believer is called into ministry. And we dealt with that yesterday. What is that ministry? Is the ministry of reconciliation. Is the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this. 
And so we move to chapter 6. We then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Yeah? For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Every day is a day of salvation. Every day is the acceptable time of the Lord. That means God is willing to bless you any day at any time you, you agree to receive salvation. Verse 3, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. Blame. Verse 4, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, and in distress. Watch this. Verse 5, in stripes, watch this, watch this, in stripes, in imprisonment, Paul is showing you his suffering as a minister of the gospel. In stripes, in imprisonment, in tumult, in labor, in sleepless nights, in fastings. That fasting there is not fasting and prayer. that there was no food. So he resorted to fasting. Yeah? But six. Let me show you something in six. Uh, we, verse six now. It says... By purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the spirit, and by sincere love. You see that? Verse 7. By the word of truth, by the word of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good re report. As deceivers and yet true. That means they called us deceivers. But guess what? We're preaching the truth of the gospel. As unknown and yet well known. As dying. And behold, we live. As chastened and yet not killed. As sorrowful and yet always rejoicing. As poor yet making many rich. As having nothing yet possessing all things. Can you see how Paul describes the ministry that he did and how he went through and how he survived the ministry? He's saying, I went through all of this for the gospel. That's what Paul is saying here. We did this for the gospel. How many of us can say, you know what, this is what we've gone through. This is what we've labored for the gospel. Because, you know, it, the, 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 the gospel was not convenient for Paul. He says, I went through sorrow, I went through rejoicing, I went through poor, I made people rich, and yet I possess, and yet possessing all things, and sometimes not having for the gospel. So I want you to ask yourself, listen to me this morning, can I say I have really labored for the gospel? Can I really say to myself that I have labored for the gospel? I'm not saying laboring to get a job. Can I say I have labored for the gospel? It's something I, I think we, we all need to ask ourselves. Some of you just come into church in the rain, in your car. It's very uncomfortable. Oh, my God. See, it's flooding. It disturbed my Mercedes Benz. That's your labor for the gospel. Our labor for the gospel in this generation. Can I show you our labor? The AC is not working. The AC is not working. This church is hot. Can you really say you have labored for the gospel? Can you really say you've done something to get this message of God's grace that is very scarce to your community? Can you really say that? Can you imagine? I didn't get my favorite spot today in church. I'm going through a lot. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? See the way they are treated. That's what you are calling laboring for the gospel. But look at Paul's own. I want, there's something I wanted to share some days ago. I, I thought it was too heavy. You know what I wanted to say? If you see Paul suffering in scriptures, I'm hoping we can get it so I can show you what I want to say to you. Can we really say we've labored for the gospel? Paul knew how to abase and to abound. So Paul knew that, you know what? Whatever you bring, I'm, I'm down with it. The irony of it all 
is that I, the people that I travel with every time I go to preach. So there was a traveling, there was a trip I had. And one of my, my, my people in the gospel provided transportation, a private transportation for us to get to Abuja. And it looked very beautiful. Look, so oh man, on a private jet going to preach. The next week I was in worry to preach. And my, the door in worry, the hotel that they kept me in worry, it was knife. He used knife to open the door. True story. It didn't stop the anointing from flowing. Oh, we, we preached powerfully. Why? Because it's for the gospel. Next time would I stay there? No, I may sort my accommodation, but it's for the gospel. It's for the gospel. So can you really say, I have done something like the last logic conference we had in, in London. I, I paid, I made sure I got people to come. I, I labored to be there. I sacrificed to be there. Can we really say that? But this is what Paul is saying. This is the mark for the gospel because it's worth it. It is worth it. It's showing people redemption. There's nothing here in this world. If you don't have Jesus, man, it's really messed up. Let's continue. Verse 11. It's a short read this morning. Paul now says, O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. You are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. So Paul is saying, this is what we've done for the gospel. It's time for you to do yours for the gospel. I speak and I want you to be open. And he's speaking to them openly now. Let's now see the open conversation. Verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Hey, why? Do not. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? I want to share this with you. Now, there is a. I, I get this all the time. Um. I get this all the time. Oh, Pastor, is he born again? No, it's not really. But he's, he has a kind of heart. He's so sweet. He's so nice. No, is he born again? Does he know Jesus? There's a lady who left the church because I said this to her. She wanted to marry a Muslim. And I'm like, hmm? I'm not saying don't, if you want to marry, I'm not going to put a gun on your head. But I'm just saying, if we want to obey the Bible, let's obey the Bible. He's so nice. He speaks so sweet. You know, he's, he's, he has a good heart. See, people flow. Charity here. He pays this one school fees. This one, he paid their, their um, hospital bill. The other one, he pays their... Uh, no, 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 no. Is he born again? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I want to say something, and I'm going to say it carefully. They are unbelievers who come to church. So the fact that you met him in church doesn't mean he's a believer. There are unbelievers who come to church too. You know, I usually we say the church is like, like the hospital. Not everybody's taking their medication. They are unbelievers. Some people just brought somebody sick to the, who come to church too. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He can be deacon, devil, ushering, name it. Don't do that. It's not good behavior. Is he born again? Then this is where the sisters will now say, okay, I can bring him to church and get him born again so we can marry. Good luck to you. Because the unequally yoke that the Bible is talking about here is, are you guys on the same frequency with the gospel? So you can even be a believer. Make sure you guys can have conversation. But primarily, cardinally, hey brothers, hey sisters, you cannot be joined. First, I won't even join you. First, 
Let's, let's, let's get this straight. I won't even join you. Your tradition marriage can hold. I won't stop you from coming to the church. There's nothing like that in the scripture. It doesn't even mean that you are not born again. It just means, it just means that you are setting yourself up for a problem that only you will deal with. And please don't come to my office, especially if I warn you. Don't stress me. See, they're all going white. Please, don't do that. Especially those of you that have marked and warning you, this guy is not born again. And then you jump into that relationship. What are you expecting to come out of the relationship? That's a set up for prayer points and prayer meetings. And, and what you expect from him is not born again. Don't you get it? Even believers with divergent doctrinal beliefs, they cause problem not to talk of unbeliever. It's so nice. So see, he see every month he goes to. He, he must go through logic, logic foundation school first. Are you go joking? Every month he goes to charity. We just pay there. Yeah. He will just pay for people who are sick. Very good. It's so ah. I'm telling you the truth. People, if you meet him, eh, he's in nine. See, what's his name? Um, uh, Abdullahi. Abdullahi. See, let me tell you, people, don't, don't see. Abdullahi has a kind heart. Auntie, don't stress me. When Abdullahi do, Abdullahi things to you, don't stress me. So I'm just saying, I'm teaching the Bible. I don't have an opinion. I don't teach opinions here. What does it, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, unrighteousness? And what communion, that's not communion table, that the word communion is communion, has a light with darkness. I was talking to one of my daughters, I'm like, so is anybody? I was like, there was somebody, but we are not on the same. And I just got it. Because this person is saying that I'm not going to jeopardize this, my. Where do you want to start from? No, where do you want to start from? How do you want to explain six hours of prayers? How do you want to explain the righteousness of God in, to a man who is not born again? Then you now say, let's pray in tongues. What do you want, uh, uh, then Abdullah, hey, what, do you, what do you want Abdullah hey, to? What, what, what are you asking for? What are you talking about? Then when you have your children, what is he going to name your children? Where, where are you people going to have this? Where, where are you going to meet? How can you fish and you bed have a relationship? Where are you going to have this relationship? Inside what are on the sky? That's what I'm saying. So let's be guided. Let's be guided. Oh, but there are no brothers in church. You're not looking properly. Stop it. It's a lie. God, uh, let me say this. God will never put your blessing outside of your reach. It's always around you. But some of you are not looking properly because you're looking for T.D. Jakes with a, a little bit of Patoranki. No. You're looking for Pastor Flourish with Timaya. No. Timaya and Pastor Flourish are different entities with different characteristics. They cannot merge. You can't be looking for Choma Jesus with Beyonce. It will not work. So, the pro so don't say, no, you are not looking properly. They are. They are. Even if you're not saying, start praying. God will navigate them to you or navigate you to them. God will never put a blessing as outside your reach. No. Everything we need in the logic church, can I shock you, is in the logic church. Is in the logic church. Everything we need is in the logic church. Everything you need to make your life work is in your environment. If it's not with you, God will orchestrate you to the place or orchestrate the person to you. There will be, that's how God does it. There will be alignment. Some of you, how did you get to know about the logic church? You just met somebody, you just watched something and guess what, you're here. 
Some of you, it's even your sister outside of Nigeria that told you about the church. So God will do the connection and bring you to the place. But what I'm saying to you is never outside of your reach. It's never outside of your reach. Not even in this day and time where we have technology. So some saying oh, they're not you can they're not Christian Christian brothers. You'll be seeing sisters getting married to the Christian brothers that you don't like. They will not blow in future. Say, I didn't know this brother was this because your eye was like this. You are looking for um a, a pastor flourish with just a little bit of the band. No, 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 I'm not a cocoa master, I'm a word master. Glory to God. Glory to God. So these are the issues. These are the issues. Please. In search, look for the cake. The icing on the cake is very important. I get it. I'm speaking metaphorically, but I'm just saying you can put the icing on the cake, but essentially, the heart must be a heart that has accepted Christ, that understands the message of the gospel, that knows the message of the gospel. Amen. I, I hope um, we, it is clear. Verse 15, we're almost done. Don't be angry if you're not happy today. Well, I'm almost done. Because uh, I, I, I want you married. But I, I, as much as I want you married, I just want you married to the right person. Let me tell you, I was speaking with, I think it was AY and Co. And I'm like, there are some decisions you can make in life that will not jeopardize your future. I can give you one. Choose the wrong career in school. Doesn't mean you will make it in life. I'm telling you, you can redirect, take a course later in life. You can redirect, do something, and you're fine. There are people who are not doing anything close to what they studied in the university. Yeah. I've never been in church, but I always try not to miss your life, P flow, for almost a year. Why don't you come to church? Silana Skea, whatever that name is, why don't you come to church? Okay, come to church, change your ways. And I'm saying there's some decisions you can take, it's fine. But the decision of marriage, eh? Oh, people of God. No, 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 no. It's not a decision to take lightly. It can do you something, or something can do you. Those are one of those decisions. Marriage movement, location, relocation. Those are essentials. Are you listening to me? Okay, so we go to from verse 15. Don't be angry today if, um, if you don't like this. Somebody tell Lisa Neska, so Lisa Neski herself to church on Sunday morning, 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. I can be following me for one year, just stealing the word of God, but don't want to be planted. Change your ways. Amen. Verse 15, um, what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? I said, how are you going to do it? How are you, how are you going to do it? Oh, she's in Joss. Oh, Joss. Joss, come to Lagos and have a service. Amen. Joss, come to Lagos and have a service. Yeah. And what... Accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Yeah. By the way, just means Jesus our Savior. Yeah. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I dwell in them. These are some of the things first lady was preaching on Sunday. So the Holy Ghost doesn't dwell, doesn't come upon us. He dwells in us. I dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Did you see that? I will be their God and they shall be my people. Glory to God. Verse 17. 17, 18, we are almost done for today. Tomorrow we'll read um, chapter 7. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. So when you read the book, come out from among them and be separate. Read it contextually. He's saying, come out from that kind of union. Come out from that kind of relationship. 
and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. That is reading an old, an, an old Testament verse to buttress his point here. Verse 18, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Let me tell you the benefit of having God as your father. It means that God is responsible for you. It means that God sorts the bill. I mean, I'm a father, a father of two, biological and many spiritually. Trust me. It's not just a daddy for title. It's a responsibility. And guess what, people of God? We have a responsible father. And because we have a responsible father, that's why I'm confident that you're going to have a beautiful November and December. I tell you, God is going to pamper you. God is about to spoil you. Because the Bible says he crowns the year with his goodness. He crowns the year with his goodness. God is a fantastic father. God is a responsible father. God is a responsible father. God is not a father who will now be... <clears throat> be questioning your needs, trying to bully you. God is a responsible father who exceeds your expectation. That's why I can prophesy to you that the month of November and the month of December, you are kept by God. You are protected by God. You enjoy the largest of God. You do not walk in scarcity. Rather, you walk in plenty. You do not walk in scarcity. Rather, you walk in plenty. You enjoy the goodness of God on every side because you have a responsible father. And let me tell you, the people, people of God, stop trying to fix yourself. You have a father who fixes your bill. So you, I want you to just know this. Just enjoy God's grace. Why? You have a responsible father. You have a responsible father. The best father that there is. The best father that there is. You know, God is my father. And God is taking care of me. My case is different. Grace is working for me. Can we make this declaration? God is my father and he's taking care of me. My case is different. Grace is working for me. God is a responsible father. Stop trying to be responsible for yourself. Maybe that's the problem you're having. You're walking in walks. God is a responsible father. So you stop trying to be responsible for yourself. Stop trying to do everything by yourself. He is such a responsible father. Amen. Amen. God is a responsible father. Tell your neighbor, I have a responsible father. I, I acknowledge it every, every day. When you hear the bills, like, I, I'll give you an example. The, if you give Sozo a bill, give Sozo any bill today, <laughs> you're not giving Sozo the bill. You're bringing it to me. So when life throws you the bill, they're not bringing it to you. They're bringing it to your father. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So when you bring a bill to my daughter from school, is it, is it really how you're bringing it to? You're bringing it to me. Even if you bring a bill to my wife, you think you're, giving, you're bringing it to me. Because I'm the father. In the same way, God is a responsible father responsible father so every time life throws you those bills kemi life throws you the bill princess don't some of you the problem is that you are accepting the bill don't accept the bill take it to god i'm telling you this one of the this is one of the biggest secrets of my life if my wife is here she'll tell you bring any bill i was okay babe just tell me the price i'll ask god for it why because you are not billing me i'm billing god and he's able to pay not just pay small, pay very well. Not just pay small, pay very well. He can pay, overpay, save the worry God. You understand? So don't take that bill of your rent to your chest. Don't take these many, many bills that are suffocating you. Here is what I want you to do. Take that bill. Give it to God. I'm bankrolled by grace. I'm bankrolled by my father. I'm bankrolled by grace. God is a responsible father. God, if you send a bill to my daughter in school, you are sending it to me. That's just the truth. If you send a bill to my son, um, they said it is. he's going to bring it to 
his father. So the problem with you, when you get those bills, why don't you bring it to Abba? If Sozo brings it to me, why can't I bring it to Abba? So after a time, if Sozo brings the bill, we we'll all kneel down and ask our father to supply to us. Why? Because he's the one we are billing. Are you listening to me? He's the breadwinner of the household because he's the bread. He's the one who gives the bread to the breadwinner. So he's him dependent. I want you to come into your November with this mindset. I have a responsible father. And I want this revelation to sit in your spirit. Are you listening to me? I want you to sit in your soul. And what is this revelation? I have a responsible father. I have a responsible father. Come on. I have a responsible father. And I'm bankrolled by his grace. And out of his fullness we have received grace for grace blessings upon blessings it is in this, it is with this in mind i can tell you people of god yes indeed it will be long now god's decree things are going to happen so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look blessings 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 pouring up on your life your family welcome to abundance and the release of the mighty graces of God in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. Happy birthday to my daughter, Precious. Precious, happy birthday to you and to all the beautiful uh, people born in the month of November. Please um, remind remind me every now and again to just speak the God's blessing upon your life. Um, have a season of the largest of God. Remember, you're delivered from wicked and unreasonable men, and God is about to spoil you and just pamper you in the month of November. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. You have a responsible father. I will see you tomorrow, same time here, um, 9 a.m. Nigerian time, 8 a.m. Um, for those of us who are here in, in London, and um, some other times in different time zones. <laughs> amen. I will see you tomorrow. We, we continue reading Second Corinthians, we're in chapter 7 tomorrow. I love you. Blessings.